Hey guys, I hope you're all in fine fashion today. We're in the kitchen. I'm so excited because finally, for the first time in I think about two months, I'm cooking with fresh produce, yay, instead of the stored stuff. I don't regret any of my stored stuff, in fact I'm very grateful to it, but to have the first fresh stuff is just awesome. So today I'm going to do board bean dip. <clears throat> it could not be simpler, absolutely easy peasy, and speaking of lemon, lemon squeezy, let me just show you our ingredients. Let's get out the way that had the broad beans in. So imagine 500 grams of broad beans, that's their shelled weight. Um, lemon, oil, garlic, loads of garlic. This is, way, this is my garlic. Um, oh, it's so pungent. I really love garlic, so I'm sticking three cloves in. Rarely do I use salt, but this recipe I do like a little pinch of salt in. Now I've only got rock salt, so I will put a pinch of that into the pestle and mortar to sort of grind it down so it sort of spreads through the dish a bit more evenly. So, at the moment, the broad beans are steaming. As I said, 500 grams. They'll steam for sort of eight to 10 minutes. When they finish steaming, I'll actually put them straight into an ice bath for no reason other than to make them a bit easier to handle because we're going to be handling them, which I'll show you shortly. By ice bath, I mean basically a great big bowl full of cold water with ice cubes in it, which will probably be melted by the time we come to show it. Um, and then once they're cooled, we can handle them. Woohoo! So this steaming's got another few minutes to go. So while that's finishing off, why don't you guys either get your ingredients together or grab a cup of tea and we'll have a little flashback to the harvest. So today, or later today, I'm gonna to get into the kitchen and the idea is I shall make what I call broad bean hummus. It's actually, it's not really hummus. Let's just move you guys around a bit so you can see into here. It's not really a hummus, it's more of sort of like a pate, a dip. Um, but my goodness, it's good, it's Moorish. <laughs> you will not want to share it. So if you if you've got some broad beans at this stage, with some nice tender little ones in them, I'll let you know in advance. Pick about oh maybe as much as a kilo and then in the actual kitchen we're going to use about five six hundred grams of them once they're podded the other thing to say is we're getting a little bit windy at the moment and as the plants get heavier with all their pods they're more likely to actually blow right over so later today i will put some stakes around the whole bed, sort of around the whole of the outside and put a string just to help hold these little guys up a bit. So, I'll carry on picking and I'll see you in a minute. And we're back in the kitchen. So, the 500 grams of broad beans have had their steam for eight minutes couple of things to say about that. One is, I don't know, so some of you haven't actually ever eaten broad beans before or tried them and you'll see me regularly scoffing them raw on the pot. Just a little heads up, when they're raw they have a really, really quite strong dark sort of earthy flavour which isn't everyone's taste. When they're cooked that taste considerably mellows. I wouldn't say it's exactly getting sort of sweeter, but it's definitely a more mellow taste. So if you try them raw and hate them, try them cooked too, because it might be that you prefer them cooked. The water that I steamed them over, as that steam's coming up and over the beans and then dripping back down into the water, some of the goodness from the beans has been lost. 
but it's in that water in the pan. So I will save that and that will become the basis for a stock later on for some soup I shall make. So let me show you these little guys now they're steamed. Let's see if we can get you down here because they're not always the most appetising thing to look at when they're cooked. See how they've gone really grey and kind of a quite a sludgy colour but let me just show you. So hopefully that will pick up. Do you see how it's gone really wrinkled um, and I was talking about this tough skin. This now the fiddly process we want to get all these skins off. Quite often they'll just pop sometimes it's a bit more fiddly but then it reveals the beautiful green bean treasure inside. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? <laughs> no, that's the problem with beans, they're so yummy. Okay, so I'm going to skin this whole bowl full. Like I said, it's a bit of a fiddly process, but oh my goodness, it's worth it. So I'm not going to make you guys sit through half an hour of me skinning raw beans. So we'll come back once they're all skinned and we'll just put the dip together. Yay! Try not to eat too many as you skin them. <laughs> do not do as I do. So now they're skinned and I've just started the process of mashing them. Have a look at this colour, it's beautiful. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? Um, I'm just using, a, what do you call it, like a potato masher. I guess in theory you could put it in a food blender. So I kind of give it a bit of a rough mash to start with. And I start adding my extra bits. Now I love lemon juice. So I'm going to put about half a lemon in there. Try it to taste first of all with maybe more like a dash rather than a whole half a lemon. That's starting to come together. Let's now get garlic in. Oh, I just, I just want to eat this. I want to eat it now. Like I say, I'm really, 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 really fond of garlic. So, and this is my garlic from the allotment just harvested, what, a week ago? No, two weeks ago. It's really pungent. But oh, I love it like that. So, I'm going to put three big cloves in. I'm going to set that closer but I need to chop it. Um, I'm going to add a bit of oil. Actually that might, whoa, the smell of this garlic is amazing. Some of that, like just a little pinch of the salt that I slightly ground up because it was massive rock salt chunks. Let's have a wee bit of oil now. Let's just have a bit of a drizzle to start with. That will do. Carry on mashing. Um, you could mash this with anything. Mash it with a fork. Like I said, in theory, I guess you could put this in a food processor. I don't actually own a food processor, which is fine. I have the blender for soups and things, but... I don't know, I think, I think most of the things I cook are too simple to require that sort of um, gadgetry and also space, electricity, all that. Do you know, every, every time I make this, using about 500 grams of beans, I should make a note to serve, do a kilo. Because I'm going to have this scoffed in two minutes. Sorry, lots and lots of banging. See how it's looking? Now at this stage, um, I'm going to just show you on my finger. It's still quite grainy. Let's just have a catch up. Whoa, that garlic. It's got quite um, a lot of texture to it still, but I like that. I like to, you know, I don't want to eat baby food. Um, so I might just, hmm, I might just put a little bit more lemon in, maybe a bit more oil. If you have any tahini, you know, tahini paste, mm. 
that would go great in this as well to make it more of a hummus. I haven't got any tahini paste, so it's, none of it's going in. And now, probably what I'm going to do is make a stack of toast like this. I don't eat bread, or well, I rarely eat bread, but actually this on toast is gorgeous. Um, I may not even get as far as the toast. I may just stick my face in this bowl and scoff it down. Oh, it's so good. Another little bit, hold on. Mm. It's so fresh tasting. That lemon just sort of makes it feel sort of fresh and summery. The green, you can, it's sort of, you can taste this sort of, the vibrancy of all the greens we're seeing around us now as everything's bursting into life. It's gorgeous. This I'm gonna call my bursting into life in a bowl because it's so, it's about to take us into summer. I love it. So listen, you guys are going to have to go away now. <laughs> it's the usual. You lot can go away. Give me some privacy to scoff this. Anyway, like I say, it's fiddly getting those skins off, but it's so worthwhile. It's really yummy. If you're doing it, that ought to serve too easily. <laughs> it's not going to. But if you're doing it for a barbecue for family that sort of thing I would say maybe make it with about two kilos because once people start getting their fingers in that it's going to disappear so have a fine time harvesting your broad beans trying them for the first time if you've never tried them before I hope you love them as much as me and for those of you who are already broad bean converts and who maybe haven't made dips out of them before give this a go I assure you, you will not be disappointed, but don't invite anyone over, close all the doors, close the curtains, because you'll want to keep it to yourself. See you soon, guys. Cheerio.